Welcome to episode 13. My name is James and in this episode we are activating the collision detection between the player and the walls. We're going to put the main collision handler inside the player prefab, but we also need to extend a lot of the other prefabs to make the full collision detection work. For starters, we can scroll to the end of the movement section in the player prefab and create a new method called handle collision. And this method will check for us if the next tile in the player's direction is a wall. That's why we pass it a direction string, which will determine which tiles we're going to check. Then we're going to take the player's now position and compare it with the two tiles that are going in the player's current direction. If there is a wall in the way, we will update the player's position to the correct position. For starters, we're going to focus only on the down direction and when everything works, we can use the same logic for the left and right movement. So when the player is walking downwards, we have to look at the bottom left and the bottom right corners and check if they are occupying a tile that is flagged as a wall. Then we also want to know on which tile on the grid the player is currently standing. That's why we take his pixel coordinates and convert them into his tile position. And finally, we calculate the correction position, which would be the position if the player is running into a wall. So if there is no wall, the player will stay at his now position. And if there is a wall, we will put the player on the correction position, preventing him from walking over wall tiles. All the getter methods and helper methods that we have used here do not exist yet. We start out by creating the getter methods inside the entity prefab. We scroll all the way to the end of the entity prefab file and create a new subsection called getters. The first getter methods, they serve us to get the edge position of the player's sprite. And when we know the edges positions in pixels, we can use these values to calculate the tile positions on the four corners of the player's sprite. So for example, to get the top left tile, then we just take the top left coordinates, which is basically the top edge and the left edge. And then we divide that by the size in pixels of a tile. And this gives us the tile position on the grid. Getting the tile positions for the other three corners follows the exact same logic. There's just one important thing that has to do with the player's sprite size, which is the exact same size as one tile in the game, which means that with all the rounding, sometimes we get a tile that is one step too far. So we need to make a correction for that by reducing the Y or the X position by one pixel. Next, we go into our helper prefab file and we create the two helper methods. The first helper method takes any position in pixels and converts that into the tile position on the grid. The calculation is very simple. We just divide the pixel coordinate by the size of a tile. Just one important thing is that remember in an earlier episode, I showed you that the tile map actually starts at the X position four. So we need to factor that in when we convert pixel values to tile values. The second helper method is basically the opposite calculation of the previous one. Here we want to provide the method with a tile and then the method will calculate for us the center coordinates in pixels of that tile. I know that was a lot of code, a lot of new methods, but basically we're doing this so we can keep the handle collision method as short as possible and really focus on the main logic here and leave all these smaller calculations out in the entity prefab and in the helper prefab. So our collision handler is calculating now where the player is going, but we're not doing anything yet with this information. What we really need to do is we need to check if the player is walking on a wall or into a wall. And if he is walking into a wall, then we need to reposition him on the correction position. The one thing in our game that knows everything about every tile is the generator prefab. 
So let's go into the generator prefab and create one more helper method that we can use in our collision handler. We are calling this method check tile blocked and we give it the tile position of any tile in the level grid and then the generator will tell us if this tile can be walked on or if it's a blocked tile and it has to trigger the collision correction. So first of all we check if this tile even exists because if it doesn't exist it means the player is trying to walk outside of the level, outside of the camera screen on a place that doesn't exist. And if it does exist we just go into the walls layer of the generator, we take that specific tile and return the is a wall flag. So if this method returns true it means the tile is blocked and if the method returns false it means the player can keep walking freely. And now all that's left to do is activate the collision handler every time the player is moving down. And doing a quick run in the browser shows us that the downwards collision is working properly. Now we can go back to the collision handler method and apply the same logic to the left and right movement. And then every time we move left or right, we also call the collision handler and we pass it the corresponding direction string. At this point we should be done, but if you refresh the browser window and try it out, you'll see that your player has a very buggy behavior and there is also an error in the console. When rushing through the getter methods in the entity prefab, I forgot to add the getTopY method which returns the Y position of the top edge of the player sprite. But when we refresh the browser window now, everything works perfectly, no errors, no weird behavior, collision works in all three directions, left, right and down. Also if you try to walk outside of the screen or outside of the level, it doesn't work, the collision detection prevents the player from doing that. In the next episode we'll start working on the death condition for the player and we'll also start creating the game over screen. I hope you enjoyed this episode, please give the video a like, subscribe to my channel and if you have questions leave them in the comments below or don't hesitate to come on my discord and start chatting with me. And if I could ask you of one favor, please follow me on Twitter, I'm really trying to grow my Twitter account and I'm posting updates almost every day. That's it for today, thank you so much for watching, I hope you have a great great day and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!